As the election countdown ticks, the candidates are making their closing arguments to voters. Joining us to talk about these final few hours before Election Day is our political analyst, Wendy Patrick. Wendy, I know you've been listening to the candidates today and through the weekend. Trump has seven rallies today and tomorrow. So let's talk about his final message to voters. What should it be? And is he staying on message? It should be Kamala broke it, I'm going to fix it. And whether or not he's staying on message, the answer is no. And that has been the, the absolute challenge of the last several days. And it's exacerbated by his physical exhaustion. How do we know that? Watch him and listen to him at his rallies. I mean, think about it. Both candidates have to be exhausted. I mean, that's no schedule any of us would want to keep for any sustained period of time, especially now in the, when we're down to the wire. But he is, he, today, I think he did a lot better. And that's probably because over the weekend, he received a lot of criticism from supporters telling him, look, you've got one singular message that's going to resonate with the voters. And that is you are not better now than you were four years ago. It's the opposite. And you want to get back there, you're going to bring down the cost of gas, of groceries. Those are the types of things that the, the voters care about, not these, these stories about the last election being stolen or laying the groundwork for the same argument being made this time. So today, uh, I think a lot of his supporters were pleased to see that he, in fact, did go back to that message. I think the challenge he has is learning how to just stop while he's ahead and not continue on. That's he, what we saw today. He calls it weaving. He said people <laughs> right. like his weaving. So we'll see after tomorrow. But so I know, so his, his message is, is kind of, tried to been honed in. Also, I've heard that Kamala Harris's message, they're also trying to shift it. So she's been really been on the attack on Trump, right? But over the weekend, that shifted. And now they're saying she's focusing less on him, more on what she can do. So is that her closing argument to voters? I think it is. And, you know, it, it's the same thing. Is Kamala's better at listening to her supporters and then putting those points into practice. And I think she draws on her prosecutor background for that. I mean, you have to know your audience and know what's important to them and know how to persuade them that you're going to do what they want. The challenge she has is she's been in office, although, like she always says, I'm not Joe Biden. We know that. But she, her administration has been in office for almost four years. She has to overcome that. And she's trying to. The, the challenge she has is laying out specifically how she is going to accomplish these goals. She understands the prices are too high. She understands the open border is a problem. But how is she going to fix it? And then, of course, the one zinger, if there ever was one at the end of the last debate, one of the few high points for the Trump administration is his final argument. He said, why hasn't she done it? She has to be able to explain that in a way that doesn't badmouth Donald Trump. As she said, she's not going there but does leave some of those undecideds uh, able to vote for her. The last time I think I was on, I said, can there be such a thing as an undecided? I've changed my tune since then because we have realized that a lot of people are coming forward and saying my ballot is still sitting on my table. I'm waiting for Kamala to articulate a plan to get us where she says she's going to take us. I have heard from the powers that be in the national level that there are two and a half percent of voters are still undecided. It is so hard to believe. Um, but in the last, just in the last few hours, you and I, before this newscast, we were talking that the numbers, the momentum has shifted a little bit in Kamala Harris's favor, um, maybe because of her shift in messaging. What did you say to that? I was amazed because just two days ago, it seemed like the pendulum was swinging the other way. And then this Iowa poll comes out that shows Kamala in the lead. Then a couple other polls come out that show her in the lead. And the one thing I shared with you that I remember we talked about back in 2016 is, is this accurate that a lot of those people that are talking about the way they voted or the way they would vote are actually the electorate? Because it's one thing to say, you know, you support anybody that's not Trump. We've heard a lot of that uh, since Joe Biden uh, resigned. Uh, resigned from the race, <laughs> not from the presidency, to start a rumor. But we've heard that. But are these the same people that are actually going to the ballot box? And are the shy voters going to make the kind of difference tomorrow as they made in 2016? That, I think, is probably one of the most important questions we'll be talking about tomorrow, because the gender gap is there again, just like it was back in 2016. It wasn't there in 2020. That was a different dynamic. And that's why we saw those differences, those, some of those states flipped from red to blue, blue to red. Right. Um, so quickly, does Kamala Harris have a mandate if she wins? 
Well, she's basically going to have to make good on her promises, and that's one of the things that she is probably behind the scenes already working on. You know, she gave Donald Trump a real hard time for saying he has the concepts of a plan, but she has to articulate her own plan, even the concepts of a plan. So that, I think, is probably the, mo the biggest challenge she has. Uh, if she had an answer, we would have already heard it. She's going to have to just keep that momentum that we've seen in the polls all the way through Election Day. And what's the mandate if Donald Trump wins? He's going to have to have the same mandate. You know, you want to bring us, he wants to make America great again. Uh, he has to also keep hammering on the fact that America is great now. He gets a lot of criticism for not bringing that message of mm -hmm. positivity to the polls. He has one last chance to do that tonight. I hope he does. Wendy, you've been covering elections for years. Can you recall an election that has been so divisive? I, I said that the 2016 election was this divisive. I think it was very much the same. We have forgotten because eight years have passed and so much has happened since then. Um, it was divisive for a variety of reasons, many of which I think are in play here. However, we have never quite had the kind of divisiveness that has surrounded the switch up that happened when Kamala replaced Joe Biden. So I think this is unprecedented. But unprecedented means unpredictable. Tomorrow should be quite a day. And uh, you and I will be on tomorrow. You'll be on right. with us tonight. And so, yeah, it's going to be a very wild next 48 hours. That's Wendy Patrick. Sure. Thank you. Thanks so much.